Thế Vĩ Cúc Ok, so welcome everyone This is the May Elementor Sydney Meetup Good to have, um, we've got quite a lot of people tonight, which is really, really nice. Good to have you all here. Here's the loose agenda for tonight. We try and start on time, 6 p.m. Uh, we do kind of welcome in introductions. Uh, we do a little what's new in the elementary world. Uh, sometimes there's lots, sometimes there's not. Uh, we can, then we do jump into today's topic, um, which is build a site in 30 minutes with site kits. Uh, so John's going to be taking you through that one today. Um, we should have, usually have some time for Q&A. Um, at the end, uh, I'm trying to finish around about seven o'clock, just so you guys know uh, roughly what the agenda is tonight and how long you are committing. Okay, so um, each uh, organizer we have here, um, I'll, I'll uh, start off. So my name is Will Brown. Uh, so as well as the Sydney Elementary Meetup, I also uh, co-host the Sydney uh, WordPress Sydney Meetup uh, for that. And I'm also Vice President of Linux Australia as well this year. Uh, my WordPress background, I've been working with WordPress since about 2005 and um, I kind of back-end developer, I kind of you'd say. So I kind of use um, APIs and uh, connect WordPress with lots of other different types of systems. So I'm a developer, that's my background for there. Kind of moved a little bit more into consultancy over the last couple of years, uh, but I still like to keep in contact with the community and run these meetups and stuff, which is, uh, I think we get a lot of um, useful um, community time and a little networking time as well. Uh, so I'm, uh, WordPress has been really good to me. So I like to give back to the community. So I'm going to uh, let, actually I'm going to hand over to John, let him just introduce himself quickly. Hi, I am John and I am a graphic designer. And I'm self-employed. I run my own uh, design studio and I pretty much use Elementor for everything. And I try and talk a client into using Elementor every single time. They might want to use something different. I talk them into Elementor um, because it just allows me to be super creative and create an amazing looking site. And I don't need to know a single line of code. So that's why I love it. Um, also with Elementor, I mean, you know, I've been using it for about three years now probably i still learn something new every single day every time i keep using it there's a lot in there that you didn't realize is there so it's absolutely amazing and i love it and yes i will uh teach you about one side of using elementor in today's lesson um and i would pass on to julia but julia's not uh with us today so over to morris hi everybody um yeah morris uh i'm a little bit different i'm an accountant by trade run a business intelligence uh, team um, in business, but do website development sort of as a hobby and uh, a few other things on the go in, in, the, web, in the web world. So, um, yeah, and that, that's me in a nutshell. Thanks, Morris. <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got a code of conduct uh, for here. Um, if you, it's the Elementor code of conduct, so you can find that on elementor.com slash community and code of conduct. For there, we'll just let you read those in your own time. You've pretty much accepted its terms and conditions anyway when you signed up for um, for the events. Um, but, you know, um, if we basically just be respectful for each other uh, and, and don't muck around. So that's, there we go, too long, didn't read. Uh, we're going to give you guys uh, the floor just now just to introduce yourselves uh, a little bit. Um, just tell us who you are, um, what you do for a living, and more importantly, what you are drinking tonight. So I forgot to say, I'm drinking my big, big cup of decaf tea because I love hot drinks. If I kept drinking caffeine, I'd be bouncing off the roof all day. So if you would like to do a welcome, you can uh, raise your hand physically and we'll have a look, or you can lose that little hand icon, uh, which is down the bottom, um, and then just uh, introduce yourself for a couple of minutes. I'll stop this share just now. Would anyone like to introduce themselves? You don't have to. Uh, Nav, is that? Okay. Nav. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I see a hand going up. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kats. Hey, Kats. Um, I've, got, um, I've got coffee as well as a wine <laughs> as well as water <laughs> on the go at the same time. Um, I'm a web developer designer and I'm from SA. Excellent. Welcome. Anyone else? Yes, I will be uh, the next one. Good morning for me because I'm from Belgium. Um, 
So I'm drinking coffee, no wine in the morning. Uh, I'm uh, as a primary uh, occupation. I am working in the port of Antwerp as a dock master. But uh, a few years ago, I turned my hobby into my uh, secondary uh, occupation. Wow, that sounds awesome! And thank you very much for connecting with us tonight. Yeah, happy to it. Thank you. Hey, who Hi. else do we have? We have a couple of little uh, digital hands up there. Will, can you see those? Or Yep. Uh, Matthias, you want to go next? Yeah, hello. Yes, good morning. Um, well, it's morning my side. I'm in Johannesburg. Um, yeah, my name is Matt, and I am self-employed, and I've been using uh, Element of quite a while now. Uh, this is mostly like a uh, second time for me to be on this uh, meetup with you guys. So I'm hoping to learn a few, a few tips and a few things from you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Roberta, do you want to go next? Hey, um, I'm from, I'm in Byron Bay in Australia. So it's night. I'm still drinking water. Didn't get into wine yet. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm an environmental consultant and trainer and teacher. And I've, just started to build my own website for my online business. So new adventure, learning a lot, and I hope I can get some um, highlights and understand some things with these classes. That's great. Thanks, Roberta. Uh, Peter, do you want to go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Peter Austin. I'm based on the Gold Coast. Um, I run a, a marketing agency called AMS Digital. Um, we build websites for service-based clients on WordPress, um, econ stuff. We use um, Shopify and we do Google ads as well. Um, yeah, the, tonight I'm drinking water as well. <laughs> you too. Thanks. All right, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Steph. I live in North Queensland. Um, I am currently studying a Diploma of Digital Media um, through CQ University, and I've been a professional photographer for seven years. Um, I've just started a digital media business, and I'm hoping to go into, like, web design and graphic design and, and um, all those digital aspects. Oh, and I'm drinking a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, everyone, for introducing yourselves, and thanks for taking your time to join us tonight. Uh, hopefully you guys get something out of this one. It's going to be a really good one tonight. Uh, John's going to be doing these uh, site kits. Um, I have one last screen share before we go over to John, so let me just share my screen a little quickly. We try and do a little bit of roundup with uh, Elementor stuff uh, you know, during, during what's been happening during the month. Uh, there's not a lot that's happened uh, with Elementor uh, this month, uh, but there is one. Uh, there's Elementor Pro has released a, a new beta uh, version. Uh, so they do this uh, time and time again. They'll release like public alphas and then uh, betas that into the public. And we get to play around with them a little bit uh, before it gets to beta. Uh, but this one is, uh, is pretty exciting. It's got uh, some new stuff in there that's going to be coming up, hopefully, in 3.7. Uh, so they've got uh, a notes section now. So this is for uh, collaborators. So if you're working on Elementor with like more than one or two uh, people, then you can leave notes on your particular designs uh, and let them know, uh, you know, what, what you've been doing, uh, all those kind of uh, bits and bobs and you know, what, what you've uh, been structuring it. So you can pass notes between all your team members or leave notes for the client as well if they're going to take over uh, that particular page. So that's going to be useful for things like landing pages. Uh, where you can leave notes and just uh, let people know, you know, what your thoughts were and why different components are are where they are. Um, another exciting one uh, is the um, the stripe button. So they, they introduced um, a PayPal button quite a while ago, uh, like a few versions back, uh, but now they've got a new stripe button, uh, which is going to work exactly the same way as PayPal. Which means that you know you don't have to do the full e-commerce. Uh, site now so you don't have to install like a WooCommerce or easy digital downloads or anything um, you can just then connect your Stripe in the back end of Elementor up to your Stripe account and then you access this little button so that kind of opens the world for anything really you can start charging for uh, your services 
you know, you can have a services page, you can start charging for, you know, individual products, uh, all that sort of stuff. So it's really quite exciting. I'm uh, really glad that they've, uh, they've done the PayPal, but I'm really glad they've kind of went down the Stripe route as well, because I personally love Stripe a lot more in the back end rather than, um, than PayPal. Uh, there's another one, uh, another couple of little widgets uh, coming in. So there's WooCommerce Add to Cart dynamic widget. So if you are running a full WooCommerce website, uh, now you can uh, drag and drop an element or they call it a widget uh, into anywhere on your website uh, and then add a product. And this is going to be particularly useful, again, for like, landing pages and sales pages. So if you really want to promote a service, or if you really want to promote like a, a product in line with your uh, blog post, for example, or a sales page, then you can just draw, drag an actual product right into there. And then that's a direct add to cart button for there. Uh, similar, uh, they've got a, a product dynamic content. Uh, and again, it's kind of similar to, to the dynamic cart thing, but you can pull in product information from any of your products uh, and whack them into wherever you want, like a sales page, a landing page, or a blog post. Um, so those kind of two things working together um, could help boost your sales uh, throughout uh, your, your product sites. Or if you are a service-based uh, consultant, then you can um, easily allow people to add your services like a consultancy, um, maybe a couple of hours project fees, uh, that, that sort of stuff. So quite, uh, so quite inciting things coming to version 3.7 uh, when it gets released. There's no release date at the moment. Um, but there's a link there. And again, I'll post all these links on the meetup page, the, the events page afterwards. Uh, but you can, if you haven't downloaded the beta already, you can get it from GitHub and just download it as a zip and load it up into whatever um, development tool uh, that you use. Uh, so that's it. That's all the, the notes and stuff for this month. Not a lot happening, uh, but it will be exciting to move on to uh, uh, version 3.7 when that comes out. It looks like there's quite a lot of uh, new things and fixes and uh, tweaks that have been put in that one. Okay, that's enough for me waffling on just now. I'm going to hand the whole thing over to John. Uh, John is going to take you through uh, building a website in 30 minutes um, with site kits. So John, I'll hand over to you and I'll mute myself just now. Thank you very much, mate. Okay, I'll just share my second screen over here. Can everyone see that? Cool. Okay, so um, here's just a brief uh, introduction to what I will talk about today. So uh, as Will said, we're looking at site kits. So we're going to look at what are elemental kits. I'll explain to you if you do not know what they do yet. Um, then we'll take a quick look at the kits library, the place um, where you can find all the kits you want to use. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the technical side of things because you may wish to just have a little play around with this yourself after the lesson or maybe tomorrow morning. Um, then we'll get into the more creative side. Um, I'll just show you how to kind of set up the logo um, and the menu um, for your website. Then we'll look at chucking in your own content to make it your own website. Um, and then we'll look at some extra little ways of personalizing um, your website just to make it a little bit more about you. Uh, we'll take a quick look at global colors and fonts, uh, make sure you're familiar with that. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions for any of this, then just save them until the end. We have a little chat window button here somewhere. You can type it into that. We can take a look at the end or just pop up your hand when we are all done. So um, let's go into this one. What are Elementor kits? Good question. Um, so this is the Elementor Kits library you can see here. And I'm just going to move this thing down if I can. Um, and um, hopefully you're very familiar with Elementor. And if you're normally building an Elementor page, um, I'm sure you've done all this before, and you're using the Hello Elementor theme, then you'll know how that works, basically. So what we're doing here is we're editing a page. This is what I start with. I start with nothing. Hello, Element Hello Elementor is a blank theme. Um, and I'm sure you've used it a lot before. You can drop in your own elements over here, or you can get some sort of pre-made bits if you click on this little um, folder over here. So you can get sort of single pages, you can get blocks and stuff like that. But what we're looking for here is an entire website kit. And that's why we're gonna look at the Elementor kits library. Um, what this will do is very different to what we do with the Hello Elementor theme. Um, as I mentioned before, I run my own design business. And if I'm working for a client, well, 
first of all, they're paying me money. And uh, secondly, they I have a lot of time to work on these things. You know, I give them a quote and just say, this will take me a week or two weeks to build. So I can kind of build what I want. But if you don't have time um, and you don't have that much design building experience, then take a look at the Elemental Kits Library. Because as you can see, this allows you to choose from over 100 designer-made website kits created to fit any industry. Um, so come over here and check it out and you will see where all of these pre-made designs are ready for you to use. And I'm gonna show you now how I can use one and how I can build a website in 30 minutes for myself. Um, so here's a little introduction to what I will build. I'm a graphic designer. And what do we need being graphic designers? We need a portfolio. We need a website that shows off uh, what we do. Um, this that you'll see here is one that I'm currently working on, um, which keeps getting put on hold because paid work keeps coming in. Um, and this is just one that I'm building myself from scratch. It's taken me a very long time. Um, but this is just to give you a quick uh, introduction of the kind of style um, that I use uh, with design. As you can see, there's a lot of bright colors and a lot of flashy elements and a lot of loud noises. Um, so what I want to do is come into the Elementor Kits library and find a template, find a kit that's going to suit that. One that's going to work for building a portfolio and one that I can use to suit my overall style. So come to this page, elementor.com slash library. And down here, these are the splits of all of the different categories. You look at everything in one go, but what do we want? Portfolio and CV. Um, so this will pop up and you will see there's quite a few different options in here um, that give you kind of completely different styles, really. And what you want to do is just kind of look through this and see if you can find one that fits you and what you're about that best shows off your personality and your design style. Um, as I said before, I'm very loud and bright and noisy. So I can tell from looking at these, these aren't really suitable for me. They're a bit too sort of clean and plain. So this one right here, Kiko Benton. Uh, this is very bright, very shouty, uh, big images in your face. Um, so yeah, I can already see from the first glance that that's the kind of thing that I want to use. Um, so when you're in here and you've picked something that you want to work with, just click on here to view the kit. And this will show you just how awesome the whole thing is. Um, so it's a pre-made website and you can just sort of play around with it in here. So here we are looking at the homepage. You can see there's a nice slider on here. Um, they have two pages already set up to show off different types of their photography style. So they have one for moments, one for people. Um, and the one at the end that's called bio. Um, and I love that. Very simple, very clean. Uh, lots of bright colors, lots of sans serif fonts, image text over there. This one works perfectly for me in terms of my style and what I want to do. Um, the other beauty is you can click up here on the tablet icon or the mobile icon. And look at that. It's already set up to be fully responsive. Um, and that's what takes me a long time building something from scratch using the Hello Elemental theme. I can build it in desktop, then make it work for tablet and then make it work for mobile. This one is already ready to go. So um, this is the one that I'm going to use. Um, this Kiko Benton uh, portfolio kit. And I'm going to show you how to set it all up. And you will just see how fast I can take what they've built here and make my own professional portfolio out of this one. So let's go into the technical side first. Um, this is the WordPress backend. Um, again, not sure what all of your um, experience is with using WordPress or using Elementor, but I'll just briefly go into what I have set up here. So um, this is my backend. This is the dashboard. Um, and I've just started from scratch here. This is just a new um, dashboard. Uh, so I don't really have anything installed, but the one thing I do have installed, obviously, is the Elementor page builder. Um, and I'm actually using the pro version for this because um, I have a pro account. Uh, the example that I'm showing you here of building this kit is actually using one of the free ones. So if you want to just have a play around with this yourself and you have the free version, you can actually do all of this afterwards. Um, but obviously, uh, if you do have the pro version you get a lot more choices a lot more options of kits 
Um, so yeah, so I'll quickly run through the technical side of it. Number one, just make sure you have the Hello Elementor theme installed. Um, that's where we're going to start from. Uh, then just one very quick technical thing, uh, which is probably set up okay, but if you haven't updated Elementor in a while, it may not be. Uh, go into Elementor, go into settings, and then come into experiments. Um, and then just down in this little list here underneath stable features, you'll see this one here that says import export template kit has a green light, which means that it is active by default. If you have that switched off for whatever reason, or it's not switched on automatically, just go over here and choose active. But mine's already active. So that's all you need to do. Make sure you've got the Hello Elementor theme and make sure that one has a green light. Um, so let's choose the kit we want to use here. Um, come over here to templates and then go to kit library. Um, and this is another way of just looking through the whole library, to be honest. You can just sort of do it in the back end. You don't need to go to the Kits Library site. Um, but that's a great way of sort of searching through it all before you start with the technical side. Um, so let's just find the one that I liked. Um, so categories over here on the left, portfolio and CV. And there it is, Kiko Benton, contemporary photography. Uh, click to view the demo and just make sure that it is the one that you want. Yes, it is. Um, and when you have decided on that, click up here and apply kit. Now, this is quite important to remember. If you already have a website set up, ready to go, that's working, that's live, be aware that if you are implying this kit, it may overwrite everything that you've already done on that website. So just be aware of that because it may go in and change all of your global fonts and all of your global colors and you might not be able to get that back. So just be aware of that. If you have, uh, like I have a site ground hosting account and I can always just open up new ones in that. So if you have the chance of just trying off play, playing uh, with a brand new uh, WordPress dashboard, do it that way. Um, so yeah, just come in here, press apply kit, just say yes to everything because it will install everything and it will just give you the little spinning wheel and it will take two or three minutes to install based on the speed of your internet. Uh, but for the purpose of this lesson, I've already done it. Um, so that is all set up and it's all ready to go. And if you come into pages here, you will see that it has automatically dropped in the pages that I want to use. Um, I've already um, automatically made a change to one of these. Um, as you can see, the pages were split up into home, moments, people and bio. Um, home and bio, I'm happy to keep the same. And all I've done is I've changed the other two from moments and people to digital and print, as those are the two sides of my portfolio I wish to show off. And uh, if you're not that familiar with WordPress, very fast way of doing that, just click on quick edit, write your title in here and put your slug in there. The slug is the end part of your URL. Best to just keep them the same. So my four pages are all now set up and ready to go. So let's start getting creative. Let's have some fun with this. Um, okay, so first of all, um, we're going to have a look at the nav bar, um, the header, and just sort of uh, add the parts that we need to that one. Um, so a couple of different ways of doing that in Elementor. I'm going to do the old fashioned WordPress way. Come in here to appearance and go to customize. Um, so this is what we have in the nav bar at the moment. Um, no menu displaying yet. And that just says my WordPress. and. Uh, it's not a nice color. Uh, I want my logo to go in there, basically. So um, let's start off with that. So in this section here, choose site identity and select logo. Um, so logo that you have and all of your images, I've already uploaded the images I want to use in this example, but just upload them to here. All of these sort of placement images that came with the Kiko Benton theme, they're all in here as well, but I don't want to use those. Um, so this is my logo. So I'll just install that one. S skip the cropping. There we go. My logo is in there at the top now. Um, site title and tagline. Probably just change those to what the name of your site is, because this is something that may show up in a Google search. So my site title is John Wolfgang Design. Uh, my tagline is Sydney-based 
Creative Studio, what I've already written there. Um, and you can add a uh, fav icon in here as well. Um, fav icon, if you don't know, is the one that appears top left in every um, tab um, that you see here. Obviously the elemental one here. And as you can see, this is the one that I use on my website. So I'll just drop that one in and you will see that's changed in there now. Um, and go publish. Save that one. Um, now let's add in the menu. Go to menus. Um, make sure you've set up correctly, view all locations. Header, that's this section up here. Let's choose the main menu to go in there. Um, and then let's set what is on the main menu. Add items. Add our four items in here. Home, print, digital. Uh, you see on the far right there, they're all displaying now. Uh, if you want to move them around in here as well, let's say we want digital to come before print, we can do that. Click publish. That's all there. It's all ready to go. So that's that section sorted. Now, uh, we'll look at some ways of changing that a little bit when we come on to section six, where we personalize it, because I'm not happy with the size of that logo. And I don't really love that color, but we'll come into that part in a minute. Um, but for now, let's edit each one of these pages and make it about me rather than about Kiko. I'm sure Kiko is a nice person, but this is my website and I want to make it about me. Um, so I kind of love all the sort of font choices in here anyway, because they're all very sort of modern. Um, this has been designed by a designer, so I'm going to stick with it. Let's pop my name in here, John Wolfgang. Um, and uh, as you see on the right here, we have the navigator window open. I love using that one. Don't know how guys, uh, if you guys are familiar with the navigator um, element inside Elementor, if you don't have it, right click, choose navigator. It just helps you kind of search through everything. So I want to edit the heading, click on there. But now I want to edit the image carousel. So click on that and that will display. So the carousel is this section down here. They already have it set up with six placement images. Let's take those out and let's make it about me. Add to gallery, five images, add to gallery, insert gallery, boom, there we go. So what we have here right now already is a homepage. How long does that take me? About 30 seconds. I've got my name at the top and this carousel is all about me and some of my most recent awesome design work. So homepage, done, easy, that fast. Um, now let's have a look at another page. We'll just open up digital. Um, and let's edit with Elementor. And what are we doing here? Digital sorted. A little bit of introduction text here. Um, you can just delete that if you don't want it. But uh, I already have some sort of pre-written information about digital. So just highlight that, choose it in your navigator. Put your text in there, sorted. Um, and then the rest of the page, this is all set up for this uh, photographer. Um, and I love the style. I love kind of like the uh, empty spaces in here, the breathing space between each one, um, the way we have sort of image and text below. That's using this image box option. Um, and I love kind of the splits of white and color there. This all works really well. Um, so I don't really need to make any changes to the layout of it. I just need to add in my own parts. Um, so we have a bit more text there. Delete that if you don't want it. Just right click on here, delete. But I'll put a bit more text in there. Um, and then we add in my own images. So let's just see what we on digital. That was digital website, wasn't it? So add that one in there. Um, it still says Emma, August 11th at the bottom, um, but let's just change this to truly Oz website, the website that I built. Um, and we'll pick a couple of others to go in here. Um, let's get a vertical one to go in there. That was for a app that I bought called Get Stoked, which doesn't exist anymore. Long story. Um, then uh, what else do we have for digital? Uh, this was one, an ebook that I built for Myanmar. Travel, ebook, how do we spell it? Um, and then we'll have one more in over here, uh, another vertical one. Uh, this is Adventuring You, another website that I worked on that I built a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, um, obviously I could just carry on and fill in all of these boxes right now, but 
that'd be quite boring but as you can see like how long did that take me another couple of minutes and what do we have now our digital page is ready to go so i kind of have the introduction here and then i have the first few images um, all set up with the same spacing and animation so awesome digital's done and uh oops print same thing edit with elementor print pre-written text change my main introduction image uh what do for print uh this is a magazine that i made for tiger airlines it doesn't exist anymore tiger tells that was a lot of fun um so i'll put some tiger airlines um and then look i mean yeah again i could spend 20 minutes here just going through each one of these let's just drop a couple of quick images in um and you can kind of just like play around with different shapes and sizes here as well so i'll go square there um vertical in the middle let's just go in with a, a landscape one there so yeah also all done a couple of minutes uh, one more page bio love this style um i kind of love this sort of top opening part then it kind of does some sort of extra things at the bottom um some extra images in um and then there's kind of like a sort of cv or resume at the bottom um i don't really want that on mine all I just want is a beautiful picture of myself and then a little bit about me and some sort of contact deets. So get rid of this. Uh, quick way of doing that in Elementor, delete section, gone. And this one, delete section, gone. And so that's all I have now. Just have this section, my bio. Uh, so let's drop an image in here. Um, this isn't actually an image. I can see that that is actually the background of a column. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with that, click on the column icon, icon up there. Go over to style, choose image, and oh look, beautiful picture of myself. There we go. Uh, and that's come in quite huge. As you can see, that's because this is automatically be set up to different sizes. Uh, and I think if I just change that one to cover. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> you don't have to look at that close up shot of me anymore. Um, and then my bio already written that type that in done um and then hey look there's some other stuff kind of going on down here uh you know hey at journalofgame.com uh and you might want to change uh, it's got some sort of social media icons in here already you might want to change those pinterest i don't use that ever I only have facebook and insta type in your titles here whatever insta.com update and then it's done so what we actually have from here now is a website that's completed how long did that take me not even 30 minutes <laughs> it took me about five minutes all right granted all my images aren't in there yet but here we are look at what we've got here here's a home page um with this slider showing off my most recent things click on digital Nice little introduction uh, animation there. A little bit of information about what I do digital-wise. And then a few of my most recent jobs here, this website, another animation here, some other things I've worked on recently, this app, this ebook, this website. I've got to print. Again, same thing. Uh, so it's kind of sticking to the same style, that consistency. Um, if you're graphic designer, you know, it's very important. Um, so print, little uh, information about the print work that I provide. Uh, recent job, and then three more recent jobs down here. Um, and then bio, there we are. So there we are, I have a website. If I just go in for a new job, I could have done that on my lunch break, boom, send it on to a client. Um, so I love that. Uh, I do wanna just change a couple of little things though. And this is when we just come on to the last section of this lesson. Um, and that is personalizing it and playing around with sort of global settings. So the, the first thing, um, that I want to look at is this header at top. Um, and uh, Elementor has sort of different kit templates. Sometimes it will be part of the theme builder, the header, but this one's just sort of part of the overall theme. Um, so a fast, easy way of editing that is click on your hamburger up here and go to site settings. Um, if you guys are familiar with this part of Elementor, this is your site settings, obviously. 
very well named. Um, and it just means that if you change any one thing in here, it will change across your whole website um, where that sort of information is used. And that's why we have things like global colors, global fonts. You'll see in here theme style, we have all the different typography, H1, so you change that the H1 font that we use, and that, that will change across the whole website, wherever you are using H1. Um, and what we wanna have a look at now is in the theme style, the header. So a uh, couple of little things here. The background color, green. I'm not against the color of green, really. It's nice, it just doesn't really represent me. You know what does? Magenta, I love a good magenta. Um, and what I love about magenta, it's just always been one of my favorite colors, but I love how it kind of sits with other colors and it works very well with the blue. I'm wearing kind of a dark blue t-shirt here. It works well with a light blue. That's why it's a great color. Um, so very simple. Here I am in the set settings for the header. Um, and let's choose a magenta. So just drag your thing over here. I want to go for a super bright one. So I'm going to go top corner for that. And you know what? That's perfect. I love it. Oh, hang on, it changed. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> it doesn't like me today. There we go. Um, so yeah, so that's the color that I want now. Um, and look, even, uh, and if you're a graphic designer, you understand <laughs> color balance stuff, that even just sits better, I feel, with this sort of lighter purple below that. But um, I may even want to change that color. Um, but I like this much more now. But what I'm actually going to do here is just copy the hex code that is in here now. I'll just show you a reason why I'm doing that come back to that one in a second um so that's the background color the site logo i felt that was too big before to be honest um i mean as much as i want to shout about what my name is uh it was just kind of showing up too big um so we have a pixel settings in here to make it smaller there we go that's a bit more subtle um and then look that's a nice font up there and that would be the same font that is being used down here um that's just in a sort of capped up version but nah, I don't know. Let me just see if I can try something else. I found a good one the other day that was kind of cool. That's called Racing Sands One. Um, hang on, just clear that up there. And then Racing Sands, uh, Racing Sands One. There we are. Uh, and uh, that's just a little bit more sort of quirky up there. And you know what? Black, nah, that doesn't work, does it? Color, make it white. Yeah, there we go. Now that represents what I've got with my logo. There we go. My nav bar is now all sorted. My header is sorted. Uh, so uh, click, or you can click update, but we're going to do a couple more things. Um, so what we're just going to go back now um, is I want to take a look at global colors. Um, reason being is because I've just chosen the magenta and I just did a copy of it, but it's not saved in my settings here. And if I want to use it again, come in here to global colors, go add color, call it magenta, let's call it mag. Type in your hex code there, boom, done. Um, now, the other color I want to play around with, as I said, from a design point of view, I love the balance of magenta and blue, um, but I really like a light blue. And I think that would work really well in the background here. So we can still run black text on top of it. So, uh, call it blue. Uh, let's sort of see. So I kind of want like this more sort of like tealy cyan sort of blue um they work really well together i love those two colors together but that's just sort of too bold and too bright so i'm just going to drop it down a little bit to some more white version yeah perfect so yeah already loving the website love the kind of color setup but let's just see if we can change a few more things here so update this this will save all your site settings and go back to editor um and look i do like this sort of light purple background but i want to edit it so um i'm just going to click on edit section and then in here go to style and here we have the color now what we did before was obviously we just clicked on that and we chose the color but guess what click on this little custom one what's in there ah oh, my global colors are in there brilliant there we go and now i have it so i now have this sort of super weird bright blue in the background and look Oh, I love it. There we go. This says John Wolfgang now. This says John Wolfgang design. This says what he's about. Those colors, that shouty uh, headline font at the top there. And then I love the way all the images sort of scroll through this light blue now. So uh, let's update that one. And then let's just have a quick look at a couple of the other pages. Um, I'll just reload this one because obviously the uh, nav bar hasn't been updated there. Now it's back to the way it should be. Uh, so this section here, the background color of this column. 
what's that going to be? We know what that's going to be. It's going to be the blue. Um, and I do like, oh, hang on, these icons down here, they're coming in at the old color. So let's just change the color of those to our favorite magenta and uh, secondary color. I believe that's the color of the actual icon that's in there. It is. There we go. Uh, so yeah, there we are. That's perfect. Love that. And then, yeah, just give it a little bit more consistency. Let's just reload both digital and print. Make the background of this one. Uh, it's got no colors, you can see there. Default, blue, love it. Um, oh, and then what we've got going on down here, that's the green. Sorry, Mr. Green, not a big fan. Let's go in magenta, update that one. Same in digital. All right. Background, light blue, love it, love it. And then this one. Keep it consistent. Make that another magenta. And then here, I'm adding my images in or whatever. What could do that? I'll tell you what, I could do both colors there. Let's do the blue on the left and let's see how the magenta looks there. Might look crazy. Might be too much of a blend from the top. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> There's no separation there. Let's make it black. Yeah, there we go. I love that. So there we go. So update. That one's updated, that one's updated, that one's updated. What have we got in here? That was updated, preview changes, and boom, here we go. In what took me there, probably less than 30 minutes, I now have a professional website that isn't displaying my menu for some weird reason. I don't know where that's gone. We'll have a look at this one. <laughs> Um, but yes, I now have a fully built website, which is looking super professional that represents who I am as a designer and is showing off all of my work for, I'm not sure where that menu's gone, sorry, um, but it's showing off all of my work from uh, digital uh, and print and bio. Oh, that's annoying, that's not working. That's probably something I've done wrong in there. But anyway, yes, uh, here we go. So homepage, print, digital, and bio. There, my friends, is a full website, and that is how you build one within 30 minutes. Send that to a client, and you've just got a new job. So yes, there we go. Um, hope that was helpful. I uh, hope you learned a lot from that one right there, and I hope you want to have a little play around with it yourself. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, and that was all very fast going through that right there. So if you need anything explained a little bit more, um, throw up your hand, um, in reactions here, or I can see there's a few chats, there's a few questions in there. That was awesome, John. Thank you so much. No worries. Um, yeah, there's a couple of questions in there. We've, uh, we've done one in response to design, but there's one from, Keo that says how to animate sections or columns. Mm, good question. Okay, so uh, let me go back to sharing. <laughs> that might help. Um, so you guys can see this, yeah? So here we are in the uh, homepage. Tell you what, let's just go to one that had a little bit more going on. So these ones, as you can see here, they are already animated. Now you can, uh, as we know in Elementor, you kind of have like different levels of different things here. So we have the back uh, area here, which is your section. Um, then within that, we have columns, and then within inside each column, we have an element. Um, so you can kind of animate the entire section, or you can animate a column, and that's what they've done here. And that's very easy to do. So uh, click on the column icon up there, or choose it in your navigator over here. Come into advanced, and what we have here is, maybe it's not on that, maybe it's on the image. <laughs> It's on the image. <laughs> I thought they set this one up on the column. So like I say, it works on either thing, that either the column itself drops in, if there's more than one thing in there, but it's the image that's dropping in. So open up your image box. Um, and then if we come in here to advanced, choose motion effects, and you literally pick something from here. So this is entrance animation. You do have different things that can happen with mouse effects um, or scrolling effects as you scroll down the screen, but we're looking at entrance animation. So what we have already set up, slide in left, 
tell you what, let's make it sliding right. And it'll show you every example as you're going through. Rotate in. That's a bit insane. Uh, bounce. That's quite cool. Pulse rubber band. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Wobble. <laughs> they all have great names. All of these ones. Jello. Okay, so there we are. So if we want Jello, that's done. And then we go into this one. Uh, let's do something a little bit different in there. Fade in. That one's got. Let's do. What do we have those crazy ones going on? Attention seekers. I like they call it that. Flash. Yeah, that's getting my attention. And then this one. Uh, events. I mean, look, it's better to have some sort of consistency for this. We did Jello, didn't we? Um, ta da ta da. All oh, right, yeah, that. <laughs> I'll take that. And uh, yeah, there we go. So I'll just show you the live version of that. Digital, that bumps in, and then boom, wobble, ta da, flash, 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 flash. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to do animations with Elementor. Like, it take you ages if you're trying to do that just with CSS. Oh, I wouldn't even know where to start doing that. Well, like that would just drive. <laughs> I just pay someone to do that for me. Um, and look, they have kind of those sort of crazy ones. Look, it goes with what, whatever side of like whatever type of website you're trying to build. I think for something like this, like a light sort of like slight uh, fade in. And I didn't actually show you then, but it said speed was normal. And you can change that to slow, normal, fast, or super fast, or Super so slow. The, the jello so. one could yeah. be waving like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Steph, Steph's got a question. She has got her hands up. Steph, do you want to yeah. unmute? Uh, um, so when you're creating a website for a client or just mm -hmm. a template website to sell, um, you obviously don't want to apply the kit to your website because it'll overwrite your own website. Is that something that you create through um, Elementor? Or do you need to sign your client up to WordPress and do it through there? Um, so both essentially, yes. Yeah. So um, we are using WordPress to build the website and then Elementor is just our page builder. So that's kind of inside WordPress. So if you've not done this before, um, you will need a host um, and famous kind of easy to use ones are things like Bluehost and SiteGround. And then you just sign up. Host at the moment, but host, I was yeah. just thinking, get yeah, more so for clients or templates to sell. Oh, look, like, yeah, that kind of comes down to the client's choice. Um, I have a couple of clients. I have a SiteGround account, I think gives me unlimited websites. So I might just build it for them using my SiteGround account to try and save them the money. But it's better if they just use their own SiteGround or Bluehost account. Um, and then you just kind of build it through their account. Um, and then the other thing that I have the choice of doing, I have um, inside Elementor, I don't think it's unlimited, but I think the package that I have allows me to build a thousand websites using Elementor with my license. So the last one that I built for, I can't, oh, that hasn't launched yet. So it's a sports-based website. Um, then, uh, yeah, I've just used my Elementor license for that because I'm like, guys, I don't mind you using it. Like, you know, I'm going to be using it for the rest of my life. So um, you don't have to pay for it. Um, yeah. So it's kind of, does that, is that kind of what you're asking here or? Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm asking. And is that through the Elemental website that they, you then create for clients? Or do you have to do that? for? Yeah. So like, like it's the option, unless their client comes in and they're just like, okay, John, like we want you to build this website, but then we never want anything to do with you ever again in our lives because we yep. want to manage this all ourselves. So they would go ahead, they would set up their own Bluehost account and then just set up the back end, the dashboard of WordPress in that. Then they just sign up to Elementor themselves, type in the license code for that. Boom, they're all set up, ready to go. Then they give me login or make me a user on their WordPress site. I can build the whole thing. And then if they never yep. want me again, they can delete me as a user. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. Okay, all good. You had a question from Paul. And Paul asks about the, your hosting environment. Um, is, yeah. a, is your website on a demo or a live version, the one that you've been playing around with? Uh, that probably is live right now, if you want to go have a look at it. <laughs> um, that shouldn't be live. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously you can do that. I'm using SiteGround to build it. And you can see as the uh, URL up here, which I should probably hide. Um, that that's not the URL I would use. Um, like my actual personal website is one that I built about five years ago, um, which wasn't using uh, Elementor. And it has sort of like a retro sort of style, which was kind of cool retro style at the time, but it's not anymore. 
Um, but that is my actual URL. So when I make this one go live, I will point that domain name at this website, but it's not finished yet. Um, so yeah, so in SiteGround, you can just keep them uh, as sort of locked, basically it's hidden, that you can only view it if you have a WordPress login. Thank you. Anyone else had any questions? Les, I think you had one. You need to unmute yourself, Les. Les, you'll have to unmute Les, yourself. You're buddy. on mute. I can't hear you, Les. So, sorry, okay. Les. <laughs> he, he's going for it. Yeah. <laughs> we can hear us. Les. Les, you have we, to we can't hear you. You're on, you're on mute. You need to unmute it, otherwise we there can't we hear any questions. Oh, hello. Shit, hello. 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 Well, welcome back, Les. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, John. Um, question uh, or comment, Elementor Pro versus uh, just the ordinary version that I'm trying to use. Uh, that's number one. Number two, you've got a lot of pictures, beautiful colours. That's probably your uh, field uh, and what you do. Uh, is more text versus pictures? Is that um, is there some sort of uh, balance there? And um, uh, is color critical? I guess uh, that's three. That's enough. Well, three be. very very good questions. Uh, what was the first one again? Uh, oh, is it pro? Is the pro version? Yeah. <laughs> pro, yeah. So uh, colors and then images versus text. Okay. So I'll start with them in order. So um, pro version. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, I just use that anyway, cause I use it professionally. Right. So it's just, you know, one of my sort of right. general sort of business expenses for the year. Um, I think I only pay about $200 or something and I'm not trying to sell Elementor here. Um, <laughs> um, they're very good. You're just limited in what you can do in the free one, but if it's just to build a small website, just to play around with it, just keep playing around with the free one until you feel you need the pro one. But I'll just show you just very, very quickly, uh, just on here uh desktop two um the if i was to go into oh, that's the wrong button uh the back end here again uh if you want to have a quick look if you're using the free version of it and you go into templates and you go into kit library you can see which ones have pro next to them simple as that <laughs> So you will just know, look, this one says expert. That might be the level I'm on, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know, but I think I could use either of those. I think we possibly have basic, pro, expert. Will, you probably know more about that than I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, expert, that's, there's only one of them in there anyway. Most of them are pro. But you can just see that there's a whole bunch of them that are free. And when I've come in here into portfolio and CV, that one's free, that one's free. Uh, and the one that I used was free. And there are quite a few expert ones in there. But yeah, so I mean, that might be, if you know, if you're trying to build a portfolio and you find one in there and like, the only one I like is the pro one, I'm just gonna have to upgrade to, to, to pro. Right. Um, then uh, images versus color, uh, sorry, images versus text. Uh, best question you could ever ask a graphic designer. Um, that just kind of comes down to what kind of website you're building and what its purpose is really. I could talk about this for days. Um, I am building my portfolio um, and what I do is about showing off visually what I have done. So in terms of text that needs to go there, it's minimal. Um, now, all I was doing on the one that I showed you there was just writing out a title for each piece. Um, on the one that I'm actually building now, there'll be a title and then a little bit of an explanation about what I did for this client because I used to work for Foxtel um, and I didn't do anything TV based on Foxtel. I did their magazine. Um, so I'm just explaining that and who I worked with and what my role was with that. Um, so I've gone into a little bit more detail there. But look, this is my portfolio and it's about me using it to show to people who are potential clients and I want to have visual things. In terms of text, um, well, that would come down to a different type of website and whether something like SEO is important on your website. So this is the one I was showing you here. Uh, this is another client I work for, and this is a travel website for traveling with kids, um, and it's called Out and About with Kids. 
And we have 1,400 different posts on here because that's what it is. It's an editorial website. And therefore, when I click on this link, which is a story about Libby Trickett, I don't know those, shares her favorite family holidays. There's a lot of text here and a lot more text than I would ever include on my website for two reasons. One, that's what the website's there for. It's for people to read it. Number two, we want people to find it when they're searching for it on Google. So we use a lot of keywords in that one. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, and it depends which website you're trying to build here, Les. Um, and if it is just a portfolio to show off the visual things, make images the main thing. Um, and then color. Yeah, so color comes down to, color choices uh, come down to who you are and personality and branding. Um, and, you know, there's a reason why a lot of your favorite brands will use a, a certain color and stuff like that. There's a reason why Qantas use red. And then there's a reason why Jetstar use orange. Why? Because orange is a cheap color and Jetstar is a cheap flight. They're budget. And they're not afraid of that. They admit to that. Whereas Qantas, they charge us a lot of money. And red is a lot more sort of high brow, higher class sort of color. Um, what I have done here on my website is gone in with this bright magenta color. Why? Because I am a bright designer. My design style is very bright and very noisy. And that may not be the style that you want when you're looking for a graphic designer. So you find a different graphic designer. But if someone wants my kind of style, I'm shouting about that now. I'm like, look at me. I am John Wolfgang. I am bright pink, bright magenta. And I love the Goonies and I have a lot of tattoos. Um, yeah, so that's why color is very important because this color represents this person you can see here and what he can do with his fingers. Yeah, thanks, Joe. No worries. Awesome. Anyone else got any other questions? Uh, I know that Murray's asked one about um, how do you actually create your own site kits? So, yeah, I can do that, essentially. Um, this is a site that I have created here. I mean, I'm not showing it whether you basically just export it. Um, and I've never done that before. <laughs> um, but I mean, everything I have set up in here, let me just share my screen one second and uh, see if I can figure it out. Um, but all right, I'm not in the WP admin of this one. Let me just see in this one right here. Um, so this is a site that I built for a client and everything that I have set up in this website I've set up for a reason. And that would be everything that you can see inside the site settings. So everything that's in here, the fonts I'm using, the colors I'm using. So typography, this is all set up the way I want it to be for the body copy, for links. Uh, I've got this color for the links and stuff like that. So basically what I'm gonna do is export this entire thing and then someone will import that as a kit library. Um, and again, not hundred percent sure how you would do that. <laughs> I don't have to look that one up. Um, but here we have import kit. So basically what I would do is I think I've done it once before or something. Tools, maybe elementor tools. It is in tools. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Import export kit. So here we are. Thanks, Will. <laughs> <laughs> And there we are, and export a kit and then bun bundle your whole site or just some of his elements to be used for another website. So if I wanted to sell this entire kit that I've created for this website to you, I can go in here and I press export, choose the templates. And obviously the templates is everything that you set up, your headers, your footers, archives, what I'm using for single posts. This is all very templated, this one. Um, and then your pages, I've got landing pages for this one as well. Uh, and then everything that I was talking about a minute ago, site settings, all your global colors, all your global fonts, um, kit information, don't know what that is. But there, just um, next and then export that and then sell it to the person and then they click import. Easy as that. Well done. Uh, Nav has asked a question in the chat. Um, I'm working with the theme Generate Press for all my sites. So when I want to use the Elementor kits, I can no longer use it. I need to go and use the Elementor Hello theme? That's a question. Uh, basically, yes. Um, I mean, I don't know what Generate Press is um, and it, whether it is actually one that is working with the Hello Elementor theme. Um, but yeah, you're kind of just overriding um, that basically. And uh, let's go back to share screen. 
Um, yes, I mean, obviously, uh, as you may well know, in terms of themes, you can only have one. I think uh, someone told me about some plugin or something where you can have two running at once, but that would essentially be that, like, you know, one page, your home page is using one theme, and then sort of further pages inside it are using a different theme. But they're still sort of different. You can't use two at one time. So as you can see here, this is the one that is active. Um, and then if I want to change it to that, and I'll just show you this right now because hang on, which one am I in? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to activate this one, which is these are the, the standard ones that come with every WordPress. And then when I go to visit site, what's happened? Oh, no. Oh, that's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> I've got some sort of search box over here. Oh, no. Hang on. <laughs> Digital. Let's see what happens if I search for that. Yeah, I mean, this is all. Look, to be honest, some of the elements have stayed the same that are in there, but it's not the same thing. My whole header has changed. Um, and actually, yeah, some of it has stayed the same. So, look, I mean, you can have a play around with it and see if that would happen. But the basic reason to that is just find the theme that you're going to use. And if you want to use these kits, use the Hello Elementor theme for that. Yeah, so the, the Hello Elementor is just a really basic scaffolding. Um, it doesn't give any design or anything. It just allows you to, it's just very, very basic and allows you to be your creative self uh, with Elementor. Um, I use Generate Press and Generate Blocks for a lot of my client websites. Uh, Nav, I think you'll be okay, okay? Because Generate Press, again, is a very... Um, um, framework type website it doesn't add an awful lot but I think you might come into some issues um, just as John has done when he switched over to 2022 and um, because you haven't started your design under that then generate press is gonna it's gonna imply its own style sheets it's gonna do its own little styling I, I know it's minimal but you, you will get some things uh, that will change uh, for that so um, I just experiment it's something you, you probably want to to look at um, but saying that I do have one client that runs Generate Press and they also run Elementor as well. So Generate Press works with Elementor um, because uh, Generate Press is very much just, uh, it's using the block editor, the Gutenberg block editor. And um, so it's not got any fancy widgets. So you can use a page builder on top of Generate Press as well. Thanks for that, Will. Yeah, you obviously understand Generate Press a lot more than I do. So. <laughs> I, yeah. I love it. It's yeah. really, really quick. I might have to check this one out, to be honest. But uh, yeah, just advice that if you are experimenting with something, just make sure you have a backup of your website. Um, and something like SiteGround, they back up automatically every day. Um, Jetpack, you know, they normally back these things up. So just make sure you've got a backup that if you mess up the whole thing, you can just go back 24 hours and pick it all Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any, any last questions? We're coming up for, we're just past seven o'clock. We want to try and wind up so you guys can go and drink your wine, make your dinners, have breakfast. <laughs> any other questions? Yeah, one more then. Um, yeah, go for it, Liz. Um, uh, the, the importance of Facebook or otherwise, is, is this a recommendation for a small business type website uh so i can kind of cover that it depends really it depends what what your business is um and whether it's necessary to have a presence on social media um i for my own professional website i have an instagram page i last updated that when i lived in thailand i think that was about six years ago maybe um, but it's still there and I still just have the page and it's just another way that people can find me. Um, whereas a lot of people that I know, um, they're more sort of what we call micro influencers and they use social media to promote their services. Um, so I have a friend, a guy who's in India and he just gives tips on his page every day about how to build website or just tips on fonts and colors and that sort of thing. Um, and that's kind of just creating a lot of followers for him. But Les, what is the business that you're thinking about? Uh, here? Oh, at the moment, we've had a, a number of them. I'm fairly much retired, but we, we do worm farms of all things. Yeah. And, uh, so it's really sustainability. Yeah. And um, I've fiddled around, you know, for years with websites and always a bit disappointed. Um, and then it depends on the number of hits you get and this type of thing. And uh, it's really just sort of, hey, how can one um, stir this website up a bit to uh, get people more interested? Yeah, look, I mean, I guess with something like that, um, it's probably something that 
uh, well, from my own point of view, I wouldn't say it's as suitable for Instagram because Instagram's more about uh, videos and photos and stuff. And you may not have, if it's wormhole holes and stuff, I'm not really sure how that would look, but <laughs> obviously being a graphic designer, that's very visual. So I'll put my things up on there. Um, and look, I mean, you just got to just question whether that is the best uh, marketing tool for you, really, for the best advertising to use social media as a way of getting people in. Um, or would you be better off doing something like Google ads um, or something like that? I mean, if you've got a budget to spend on your advertising, you know, you can talk to an advertising agency about this. And I think the general rule that I'm trying to say here, which I kind of get this from clients sometimes, is don't do everything. And everyone's like, right, I want to be on LinkedIn and I want to be on Pinterest and I want to be on Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat and MySpace or whatever they are. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa slow it down. OK, focus on one of those <laughs> and see which one of those is most important to you. So I think do a bit more research into the wormholes and maybe speak to an advertising agency and just see what the best channel for you to take is. Would it be Google ads? Would it be Facebook? Would it be Instagram to help you grow the business? Right. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for John for doing that presentation. It's always actually good to see somebody building an elementary. We can talk about it. We can show pictures, but it's good to actually see somebody, you know, using all the, the different elements and, and things like that. So thank you very much for that, John. And thank you guys for your uh, questions as well. So we are going to round that up tonight. Uh, next month, uh, it's on uh, the first Thursday of every month. So it's June the 2nd at 6 p.m., same time. Uh, I'm going to be talking about WooCommerce. So WooCommerce template designs and Elementor. Um, so let's build an online shop. Basically, I'll go through all the, all the different templates, all the different options, uh, and all the elements that are available so you can build up a nice custom WooCommerce shop for you. So hopefully see you guys there. Um, I'm going to say goodnight. I'll give everyone... A couple of seconds to, uh, if you want to save the chat as well, you can, uh, there's a little three dots there if you want to save the chat, um, all that information. Otherwise, I'll post all that information on the, the events Elementor website. So thank you very much. And hopefully, guys, see you next month. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.